So my name's David Gilbert and I'm a part-time sculptor because I'm an academic in another subject part of the time, but I've been developing my um, interest and skills in sculpting. I've worked in stone and wood before and also clay um, and I've only done a, a couple of pieces in wood before which have been in wood board because that's what you can get in this country so it's bas relief, um, sapili wood and um, tulip wood and um, I'm a member of the East Finchley Open Arts Group and um, a request was put round for an artist in residence for sculpture in wood and I applied with my CV, my sculptural CV and um, I had some various things that I've done before so that all came up um, and that's my business card at the moment uh, with a plan and I was accepted and so the deal is that I'm here for six months from the beginning of um, May, it is now the middle of June so it will be until the end of September or October and that I can use wood from the garden so we've got um, these oak tree which has been lopped so that's a piece of the oak tree that's uh, a rotten piece of the oak tree and I can carve and use what I like from Can you use wood. the uh, rotten one? Um, maybe I will but actually now I've got some bigger pieces that are not rotten I've, but the rot is probably only in the sap wood but that's already hard there so I don't know it, it, it might have some shapes that I like anyway, so, uh, but it was light enough for me to bring in myself, so we'll have to see, but I might use that. I've also got um, a piece of you. Which I've um, debarked, well actually it's a bit of, yes, I've debarked mostly, and then there's sapwood and... Um, the heartwood is a beautiful reddy brown colour. Right. And I don't so once you sculpt it, will you still have all these different colours? Well, I won't. I will take the white wood off because I don't want the sapwood. So it'll have a, a reddy. I don't know what colour it'll go as it dries, but it'll have a reddy brown colour. The problem with um, green wood. This is all green wood, but this is probably drier than that. Is that it splits? But I think that the U will not split too much. I'll have to wait and see. As the pieces dry out, then I can't move this, I'm afraid. So the, <laughs> they, they split uh, at the dry ends, and then the more you remove the bark, so I've removed some of the bark here to reveal the sapwood, and I will get to the heartwood eventually. So I'm going to debark, desap this whole thing, um, and then it begins to split. So this piece here. I've taken made some drawings. That would be a piece from the bottom of the tree that was lopped. That's the U piece. And then this was the piece of wood that was this was made from. And then I gradually, that was just with the sap wood there. I removed it to get the heartwood. I'm just using differences ink and different media. And then a face began to emerge because I have um, a maquette which I've made several years ago, um, which is in ceramics, um, just to get a feeling of things and then eyes, nose, mouth began to emerge more and more from this. These are drawings done after at the end of every day. So do you know what you want to do before you start or does it sort of emerge itself? Um, I thought that from the shape of this piece of wood, since I've done heads before, I'll try with a head because I know what I'm doing with a head. Um, with the next piece of wood, as we'll discuss in a minute, I don't know yet, but I'm thinking about it. So the head, the heads emerged, and then I was. This is actually Indian ink from Stevens House, uh, Stevens Indian ink, and I've just been drawing in different media. But uh, the latest one. So now we have. Um, this is most of the work surface marks have gone. I'm going to keep this looking rough and then this is getting smoother, it's not finished polishing yet but I'm going to smooth it over, try to get rid of the work marks, the cracks will be there so there'll be a feature of this tree, it's a 200 year old English oak tree it's older than Stephen's house as it happens so there must have been an estate with oak trees here and this is just um, a horizontal, part of a horizontal limb, limb from there and when I've smoothed it as much as I can then I'll probably put on a beeswax 
polish and see if I can just make it a little bit less dry. It's probably going to be quite thirsty and it will stand up by itself. So that's what that will look like. And then this, um, this is a drawing actually of this larger piece of um, oak. So that's a, a metre, just over a metre tall and a third of a metre in diameter. So it's going to weigh several hundred weight and I will debark it and then I will decide what that shape can hold because I will be constrained by the shape of the trunk so it won't be a head or only a head because that would be too long but I'm still thinking about what it might be I do figurative work so it will be body-like I take inspiration as you can see from all sorts of modern uh, European art yeah, um, which is often based on some ancient art and also I've got inspiration from African wood yeah. sculpture which I think is fantastic because they're definitely from pieces of wood so you can see the shape has been constrained by the wood they've got it smooth they're able to get spaces between things which I think is going to be difficult with the green wood I don't know how they've done that and then they have a whole series of ways in which they represent the body in the human form so uh, I'm just um, thinking about what I will um, do um, with that. Um, there is a um, possibility, so this is what I'm thinking about. Um, but for decorating it, so this will be from the Congo. They can be quite frightening. Um, but I don't know yet whether I will go as far as um, actually driving nails into what I'm doing, but uh, it could be quite startling. So I just work in here in uh, my converted gentleman's toilet. I'm very, very happy with uh, the facilities they've given me. It's uh, quite cool in here, which is good to keep the wood um, in a constant temperature. And I've been buying a lot of equipment and tools that are suitable for working with wood, so I only work by hand. So it's all chisel and like that, so it, there's no power tools involved whatsoever. They're very, very sharp quite dangerous, so I'm going to... Does it keep you fit? Yeah, it, it certainly keeps me fit and active, and um, I shall just uh, continue to do this kind of thing. Year old. This is a 200 year old oak tree which was locked because it was getting a little bit diseased. Hopefully it will grow back. I don't know, it's locked on the 28th of February, so um, it's now the middle of June. And these are pieces of the horizontal limbs that came down, which is going to be a very big one. So uh, these would weigh half a ton, three quarters of a ton, maybe. And it's going to be quite a challenge to move them, let alone put them in the ground, but that's what it's all about. So the things that you've seen so far are really small compared to stuff that, that, that will be there and there's an awful lot of it. I feel privileged um, and this is slightly in awe. Um, you can see some of the rotten wood in it. But these big ones are very, very heavy and probably slightly dangerous. Is that more from the same tree oh, or is it? Just... Say, yeah, I mean yeah. there's a couple that are not from the tree, obviously that cuts some other trees down, but yeah, it's from this stuff. So I don't know what this is. Mm -hmm. Another tree. So this is all this stuff here is more rotten, but there's a lot of it um, everywhere. Several tons. Beautiful tree. Yeah. 
so I hope I can do justice to it. <laughs>